Sportster Pavel here. Let's talk about putting together a four-speed Sportster transmission. To start out, let's look at the three different kinds of main shafts over the years. You know, they go back to 52 in the K model Sportster in 1957, all the way into the mid-80s, or actually to 90, when they went to the five-speed transmission in 91. The oldest, this is the clutch gear, this is the main shaft. You go like that, your clutch basket, I don't have one handy, clutch basket goes here, this is the, the place where the sprocket that goes back to your rear wheel goes. So this is the oldest one I have. It's got, it's meant for a dry clutch. So that's 69 and earlier. I think the dry, the wet clutch came in in 1970, if I remember right. So you can see, I'll put it down here. You can see it's got a seal here. The main shaft is hollow. Hard, oh, maybe you can't see that. Yeah, how about that? You can see through it. So it's got a hollow main shaft because you actuate the clutch from this side. There's a gizmo, a little worm gear that presses in and a bunch of little rods in here, hardened steel, that go and apply the clutch basket that's out here. The next one in 67, they went to electric start. To keep that basket a little more stable, they lengthened this clutch gear. The main shaft is pretty much the same. If I remember right, it's identical main shaft. They didn't change that. It's still hollow. There you can see it's hollow. This is for an O-ring. It's, it's longer. This is a longer uh, clutch gear. Similar up here, a little bit different. And what, what they've done for the dry clutch used in 67, they went to a dual row Torrington right here. So that stabilizes the basket a little bit so that the electric start doesn't, doesn't uh, grind up and, and disengage and have problems. Then in, in 70 in the wet clutch, now it's, it's kind of, it's closer to this one. This has still got the bearing because I'm too lazy to hammer it off. Uh, it doesn't have the seal like this one here. It's kind of hollow here, you can tell. It doesn't have this extension in the O-ring cut, so this is a later model. The shaft is solid now because the clutch actuates from this side. And it goes like that. So that's a good introduction to the main shafts. We're going to put together this later model one. I mentioned hammering on these gears. It's, uh, you're not supposed to hammer across the race of a bearing. So because if you're holding this, you shouldn't hammer on the outside because the balls, you're, you're denting the balls. Unfortunately, I don't know of any way to get this off of here without hammering across the bearing. Uh, I use, a soft hammer, Duncan Keller at Yankee Ingenuity in San Jose, California. The way he taught me is if you hold it in your hand, don't put it on anything hard and whack on it with a hard hammer. Use a soft mallet, rubber mallet, and hold it in your, hold a piece in your hand so it's got some compliance. I have to admit, all the years I've been putting them together, I've never, you can tell when they're dented. I dented a, some towing a car with my motorcycle in a parking lot. And you can tell when, when you've dented these bearings, thump, thump, thump. So I'm not gonna take this one apart. So now you have to put the clutch gear into the trap door. This is the trap door assembly. The trap door, let's see if I can, I might have to focus a couple times here for you guys. I get it? No, it's still not good. Let's go like this. Hey. So this, uh, Trap door has got little spring wires. I'm having such a hard time with this thing that uh, these hold in this this bearing assembly, this bearing. To get them out, I take a screwdriver and kind of get under it. And once you once you get a little corner pried out, you can get the, you can pretty much just pull it and it comes out. I don't think they say to replace these every time. If you bend it or something or get rude, you probably want to replace it. Now to put it in, I didn't want to hammer it from this side because that's kind of hammering out the clutch gear. I kind of just wanted to go like this, center it up. Let's see. Oh, that kind of felt good, didn't it? Different. Everything's different. You know, a couple thousands, clean it. Oh, that's something I wanted to do. I cleaned it before. A little bit of tri-flow. So some tri-flow, just a scratch, you know, to go in there and 
kind of help this guy seat in. So once it hopefully watch it won't drop in as nice as it did before. It's it's got to be going in straight. If it starts going in crooked. See now I've got it a little bit. You can tell it's a little kitty wampus, right? So now hit over here. You can also hit like here and try to straighten it out. Now it looks like it's straight again. Ah, that nice sound. That meant it moved a lot. That whack. Let me make sure. Okay, now you can see here it's running out. So let's try to. And as it goes in, it gets straighter and straighter. You can straighten it out there. This is kind of hacker because you could press just on the outside race with if you had a big collar. That'd be the right way to do this. But I've done it all these years. And now it's getting flush. Now you mess with the rings. So here's one ring. <laughs> Things spread. I'm going to get safety glasses on. And the rings you can kind of just start and spiral in. They're not too hard to deal with by hand. There. And you can push them a little like that. So now you can see, you know, the ring snapped in. Now I can whack it. Now that it's trued up in the bore, it's a lot easier to whack in. And it sure looks like it's flushed up. Let's see if I can show it on this camera. So it's flushed up there. So then you can take the other ring and hopefully it will go in. Like I say, this is pretty much just, you can do this by hand. Pop. Look at stuff, feel stuff, and make sure. Did it snap in nice? So other than the hacker thing of this crunchy hammer that left all kinds of little pieces in here, don't do as I do. So now you've got the trap door and clutch gear assembled. That's great. Next thing, I've taken the counter shaft bearing out. It's a, on the other side of the counter shaft, it's got a thing on it so the oil doesn't leak out of the tranny, but this one's straight through. It's hollow. This goes right here. Now think, here's the counter shaft, and this bearing is going here. This counter shaft's going to go in like that. We'll get to that in a minute. But some guy, if you're, oh, leave, it, leave this out a little. Leave it proud of the surface. Don't do that. You can see, let's see if I can help you here. You could have this it's almost an eighth of an inch there, not quite, 3 16th, whatever. So you can have an, uh, this bearing running quite far recessed into the trap door. So make sure that it's, it's on a nice place of the shaft. Don't, don't let the end of this main gear, this gear, this counter shaft gear. Now I'm going to do, because I'm replacing all these, this is obviously not going to go into a bike. All this stuff's getting thrown away. So I'm going to try to do some Mickey Mouse stuff here and see if I can get this in. I actually have a bearing driver. I think maybe I'd get that out, huh? Still can't chew this thing up. There we go. Similar principle. The ends, it's amazing they haven't damaged any of these Torringtons yet. Now I have a problem in that. I, it is sitting proud and I got to go get a little driver. I'll be right back. Rather than get the fancy little driver from home, not Home Depot, what is the uh, Harbor Freight, Taiwan stuff. Get the right exact socket, make sure it's not too big, and you can go here and now you can get that recessed a little bit. There we go, that felt good. That's what you want. Could even go in a little bit more. Oh, 
gonna give it one more shot. I'm gonna give it one more shot. Okay, so now it's re recessed a little bit. You can see it there. Let's see if we can do a refocus for you. And that's that. And you can, you know, feel everything. You can put the counter shaft in there right now. Oh, that feels pretty good. Next thing you got to do, if you've pulled this out, and you, it's not a bad idea to really clean this well. There's this little cast iron plug or steel plug that goes in this side. It's got a hole in it. Oh, this one's defective. Amazing. No wonder I got this at the junkyard. This is supposed to have a through hole in it right here. There's supposed to be a hole right there so that oil drains down here and then goes in the center. Well, that explains why this was in a swap meet. And the big hole goes up. This is the way that this trap door sits on your bike, this way. So the hole goes up. Similar thing, you can kind of get rude with this. Let's see, there we go. Now just tap it. Still, there we go, finally. So, a little rude, but it works. So now you've got the hole pointed up. Now you've got the, uh, the trap door assembly pre-assembled. You're ready to mess with all the gears and all the settings. There's even a shim that might go in here. It's a mess. So we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, the counter shaft. I like it smaller. It's easier to deal with. I kind of like it. Let's take this one apart so you can follow. This is that uh, main gear that runs against the clutch. This one just slid off. It doesn't always do that. Sometimes you got to kind of, same thing, rubber mallet one way or the other. You can see it's recessed on this side. So this goes to the outside. I like it. It's probably not critical. Got to have this little spacer. That goes here, and this goes on top. Once you get that and that off, this is one of those gears that spins free, right? It's not attached to the shaft. It comes out. Here's, here's a you know, tricky part. This little washer. This is so that there's a nice smooth surface. This shoulders up, let me get this here, against all these splines, and then kind of pockets in to here. Obviously, where the holes are for the dogs, you're gonna face that to the dogs here. But see there, I've left out the thing, that's bad. There's another one used for the main shaft. Let's put them together. They are different. The main shaft one is a little bit bigger, but very similar. Can we hold them like that? I don't know. So, it has to fit nice and tight, slip in. There, there's uh, some little detents here so that it doesn't rotate. So that fixes that and gives a nice smooth steel surface for this gear to run on. Life is good. So that's that. Gotta find that. The uh, thing comes off either way. So let's take it off this way. This is the gear, it's got four dogs on it. The sliding gear that goes on the main shaft, it's got five dogs. It's got five dogs. That's how to keep track of that. So the four dog thing, don't face dogs to dogs, female to male, life is good. Then this last gear is the first gear, low gear. Now you got more shims and BS to deal with. You pull it off. Look at this, I've got two. So these, there's a whole set of different washers. Now, if you're taking a bike apart and it was working okay, it might work okay again, but you, you really should understand the principle. And that gets to what we were talking about. Remember this thing, this little guy goes in here. And uh, this guy. Hold them together. Let's see if I can get that just right. Matter of fact, let's make it so it does, it, it won't pocket in. It's hitting the edges. 
So now, see that motion? You've got to have clearance on this side in neutral, and you've got to have clearance on this side. Without these washers, let's see if I, how do I do this? Yeah, see, you can't, there's no place to slide this where it's not engaging both. The, well, you wouldn't blow the tranny up, the bike just wouldn't run. You, it wouldn't be, it would be jammed in first and second at the same time. You're not going anywhere. So the whole theory on these washers, there's a whole set of them, various thicknesses. I can tell I used Molly grease on them. Uh, you, you pick those washers so that you have the right spacing for the particular gears and the particular dogs and blah, 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 because they're not Andrews manufacturing. Andrews makes stuff tight. And once you set it up, you can probably just substitute parts and be okay. But the old Harley parts were a little sloppy. So that's the principle there. There's another washer, which I can't get out. Here it is. This washer, this big washer. It pockets in to the first gear. That's used because in the transmission, you can't let this thing slide too much, the whole thing. You can't have too much end play back to back. So there's this whole goofy procedure where you get a bicycle spoke or a bent little uh, dental tool and you sneak in and you get, under one, you get under one of these gears and push and pull and try to figure out how sloppy this is inside once the bike is all together, once you've mounted that trap door in. So that's a, another joy. So then this goes here. So let's, let's start. Okay, counter shaft assembly. Here we go. <clears throat> Where you want to start? Uh, this little hole. See, that's that thing that drains from from the trap door that we showed. It's supposed to be through hole. Here's like first gear. This is where it comes out to keep first gear nice and lubricated. So. Well, we can start from first gear. We know these shims go in. We know first gear goes in. Uh, th th this thrust washer is already in, so that's life. Then what? Well, we have dogs here, right? This is how you kind of figure out. I don't remember it. I just kind of figure it out as I go. Once you remember it's four dogs on the counter shaft, well, they don't go. This gear's got to go next because you've got dogs there. You've got to have the sliding gear next. Put the female towards the dogs. goes in either way, so that's nice. So that's done. That's good. Next, you've got to remember this little guy that they never let a gear run against splines. They never let a smooth bore gear run against splines like this. So you gotta have this little washer, make sure it's the counter shaft washer, not the main shaft washer, they're very similar. Then similar principle, you got dogs on this side, you need the females on this side, that slides in, life's good. You gotta remember your little spacer. You'll know when you put it, when we put this together, you'll see if you went wrong. Like I say, my preference is the big hollowed out spot I like to do here. Bam. So there it is. There's the uh, counter shaft assembly ready to go in the trap door. So we'll set that aside. Next we'll do the main shaft. Okay, the main shaft, it's got this gear, the biggest gear, I think in the whole tranny maybe. Uh, it's got splines on the inside. It connects to the main shaft on these big spines. It won't fit this way. You can kind of see, you know, that ain't going to work. They're trying to help you. Same deal, the recessed part I put towards the outside. My thinking being oil can now get in there and keep this thrust surface happy. Uh, just like I said, sometimes that big gear on the counter shaft's tight. Well, this is tight. I don't think I'm going to be able to, uh, I'll have to take it to the vise. I don't think I'm strong enough. And it's closing in a little. I'm going to go to the vise and whack it in. I'll be right back. Okay, it makes that nice whack, you know, that thwack sound when it solids up. You get to learn that. Uh, there is a washer, just like you space the counter shaft back and forwards once it's inside the bike. Got to do the same thing with the main shaft. That's this goofy thing 
with this leg on it, with this little teardrop thing. And that goes on the outside here. There's a whole range of them. You gotta buy like 10 different ones of different thicknesses and try them and rarely stack two. Usually they were good enough to get that pretty close. Okay, then what's next? Well, the sliding gear has splines and the splines don't go all the way. So this must be the smooth gear that goes forever and ever. Just the smooth board gear that spins free. Okay, well, so far so good. So there's this thing shouldered up. The, obviously the females go here to engage here, but once again, they don't let this surface run against sharp corners of the spline. They've got one of those washers. It's got two little, two little indentations there. That, so you've got to rotate it and it slides up and that gives a nice unrotating surface, steel against steel. That's happy. And then there's this snap ring. And I think these they say to replace every time, which I've never done in my life, but you're welcome to it. I, uh, I like to use these uh, piston ring expanders. They tend to go in pretty good. And it goes in like that. Expand like this if you're lucky. And then once you get it that far, slide, 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 snap. Make sure it's seated nice. This fell off, no crisis. There's a little tang that goes on, on this uh, thrust washer. There, there's a little pin, it should be, sometimes it wears off. There's a little pin to keep this from rotating. See, they don't want this rotating against the soft aluminum case wearing it out. They want this fixed. By, there's a little roll pin that comes here and sticks. That's the other reason you want this dented part of the gear to be, uh, to be facing out. Okay, so now you got that, you're almost home because it's pretty easy now because you remember dogs got to go to dogs. We're all dogs. Bang. In, out, in, out. So there you go. Now, let's uh, clean up. Now we'll start putting stuff together. All right, there's a lot of ways to get this together. It's a little tricky. Different people do it different ways. What I like to do is before putting in the pin that carries the shift forks, slides back and forth, I take the counter shaft. I know I've assembled it right. I've remembered that little washer. I've remembered this, let me put it here. I've remembered this spacer. I remembered that little, little washer that goes in there. And I know it goes like that and that makes me happy. Where's our top hat? There's got to be a top hat somewhere. Oh, it's on the thing. Good. So this is going to go in like that. Where's that gear? Here it is. If you put this in fourth, this would actually plop down in center. So now you've got some chance. Take this guy, get him started, swing it in. And now half, you see the main shaft is just got these two gears left on it. Now you can take this pin, run it through, and matter of fact, you can actually doing it this way. Many ways you can do it. There. When you get okay, so the pin just popped in. I can tap it a little. You can look on the other side to see how far it's coming through. I think you just tap it until it bottoms on this side. If I remember right, it's been a while. Okay, so now you've got that. <clears throat> you can take this main shaft sliding gear, one with the dogs. Put that there. Now you can take the main shaft. You got it. Boom, we're together. So life is good. So there it is, assembled. Notice I didn't grease it. You use, I use lithium grease, white lithium grease, because this is just the beginning of your troubles. Now you've got to make sure all those washers and all of that business are straight. We're going to go over that next, okay? So now you have to look at all the setup things. Now when you put it in, you've got these thrust washers to worry about, the one, this one here and this one here. 
That's after it's assembled. This thrust washer, it's pretty easy to figure out how thick. I brought my little yellow thing full of them. Look at this. Look at them all. Right? Dozens, all kinds of different thicknesses. I don't ever remember stacking two of them, but you need all those thicknesses. And I've found the simple way is when you put the tranny in, go grab this sprocket, you know, don't, before you put the sprocket on, because you're probably going to go a few times, and just pull it, whack, 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 whack. You can put an indicator on and get all machinist on it, but pretty soon you get a pretty good feel. When it's too tight, you know you won't be able to turn the transmission. It, it seizes everything up. But you just want a little tick, 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 little motion here to show you have in play, but not so much it starts affecting the clearances on these dogs here, right? That's what you're trying to do. Similarly here, you've got to come like, there's a hole, this hole right here. Uh, you can get a spoke or a, a dental tool with a hook on it, and you reach in there. And what I do is a, a tiny little screwdriver and a spoke to get around that first gear so you can push with the screwdriver and pull with the spoke, and tack, tack, same thing, that little tick, 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 uh, uh, I mean, it just doesn't seem worth it to like pull this thing and have a dial indicator. You get a feel for it. Just not a lot of motion, you know. If, I think five thousandths, I'll look at the specs and put it in the description. But that's when it's all together. Before it goes together, or you know, before it goes into the bike, you got to have all these other choices to make sure. Now what you're trying to do, let's see, maybe I turn it like this for the upper camera. Right there, perfect. What you're trying to do is, it's in neutral now, right? I've turned this shifter mechanism here. I've turned it so it's in neutral. If you have a tough time turning it, you can put a screwdriver right here and, and you know, operate it manually like that. But when it's in, ah, let me get, having such an extraordinary hard time working backwards. Here we go. There we are. So what you're trying to accomplish is in neutral, you want the gap he here, the gap here between this dog and this gear to be enough and equal to the gap here between first gear and the sliding gear. Similarly, on the main shaft, you want the gap here to be about the same as the gap there. You can't have these things bumping uh, when it's like that. So in neutral, you know, you should run it through all the gears to make sure that everything is spaced right and working right. The, the way that you can move it, now, now here in the counter shaft, you've got those two little washers, right? These guys. And I've got a selection of those somewhere too. Uh, where are they? Are these them? I think these are them, right? So I got a selection of those that, uh, and here I have stack two. It seems creepy, but sometimes that's what you have to do. So once you get enough space with those washers, now you're trying to center this sliding gear. And the way you do that is with different length shift forks. This, this little pin on the fork, they have them 20 thousandths this way, 10 thousandths this way, 10 thousandths shorter, 20 thousandths shorter. So you can buy and try different ones of these. How's it go? Let me see. This, is, this happens to be an old steel one. Some guys like the steel ones. I think the brass ones are just as good, probably better. So like this, you can see if, if, if it's too far this way and you, and you want to pull this gear, ah, you want to pull this gear back a little, well, then you make sure that this fork is a little short. You make it a negative, a minus 10 or a minus 20. And that pulls this that way. If it's running too close to this one, enough space total, but a little too close to this one, well, then you get a 20 over or a 10 thousandths over, and you push the, the gear, the sliding gear that way. Same principle on the, uh, on the main shaft. With that, with that uh, guys, coming in like this, right? If it's too close to here, you get a plus 20 or a plus 10. You push it a little ways away. If it's too close to this one, you get 
uh, a minus 20 or a minus 10. And you pull it back in this direction, okay? Same deal. Now here, they must have enough machining or manufacturing tolerances even in 1952 that there's not washers you stack up. They just assume you're going to have proper spacing here, between the total spacing. So then you're just trying to use plus and minus shift forks to get this centered. So that's what you're looking for, a nice, call it a safe neutral, where you've got gaps on both. There we go, we're in neutral now. It's a little close here, right? I don't think I'd run it like this. This thing needs uh, a, a different shift fork. Now, to make things really complicated, because their manufacturing tolerances were so crappy, they introduced these little shims. These go underneath this uh, whole shifter mechanism. So you can imagine there if both of them, let's say you start with standard, start with standard forks, put it together, and both of them are too close to here, both, you know, both of them are shifted this direction. Well, if you put one of these shims in here, it moves the whole mess out, both sliding gears move out. That must be needed at some point in the horrific manufacturing run. That must have been needed to chew up these transmissions. And I don't know if they were having problems with controlling this dimension to this dimension, something. It's definitely not a precision, precision machining operation. Put that back there. So other things, well, there's two folding washers. Here and here. I should have some. My eyesight was better. I could find them. Here's one of them. I believe this is this one. So if you do take this plunger, this plunger right here is what, what uh, detents. That's, that's the actual shift detent that this round cow patty plate pops into. If you do take that out, don't reuse that. Go get the little washer. All these part numbers I'll put in the description goes down this bigger hole here. This is where that pin comes through, right? So this goes in here, you tighten it, you bend it up. There's a spring in there and a plunger. That's that. I may not have, this is a little tiny one and I rarely take the, the top out, the, the shifter mechanism out. So I don't see that I have, oh, maybe I lied. Okay, dig, 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 how about that? So here's the uh, shifter mechanism. Do I gotta focus for you guys? I guess so. So here's this one. It's uh, similar, it's got little round ears, a tab bent 90 degrees here that goes into this hole. I think, or no, this one happens to be up here. So it goes in like that, then you can solid that up. I never tear it down that far. It never seems to be necessary. You can kind of get in there and clean stuff as clean as it's got to be. Now the trick is to find where I found this. Right here. There we go. So those are just some of the things. When you get it true enough, When you get it true enough and you know, you've got your gaps and, and the sliding gears are right in the middle, there's clearance, identical clearance and neutral, that's a happy day. Then you can put the transmission in and figure out how much end play. And you've got to do that because you can imagine, okay, this is better to teach the principle, you'll kind of see what's going on. If there's too much end play here, then the shaft can move Let's say, uh, I'm having trouble getting it there. See, I've moved the whole shaft. So let's say there's that much end plate. Well, now you're clanking the gears in right there. See what I mean? Because you've lost, so the end plate here allows this to get too close. 
click, 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 because nothing's going to change with, with this gear. This gear is being uh, constrained by that fork, the shift fork. So end play closes this gap up. That's why you don't want much more than five ten thousandths. I forget the spec. Similarly, here, end play opens up the gap here, right? This gear isn't going to move. The fork is holding it. But let's say if you got a lot of end play, well, then this can come out here. And now when it shifts in, it's not really engaged all the way, right? And, and you get the, the similar thing here. If this is out this way, if you pull this one too close, that also means when you go into first, you're not really going to be engaging first all the way. So that's why you control end play, to keep the distance between these two gears and these two gears nice and tight, not moving around any, so that when you do these sliding gears, they engage properly, and in neutral, they have clearance here, here, and here. So that's that game. We're not gonna, I don't have a bike apart to put the transmission in to show you, but this should get you pretty far into at least getting one together. And like I said, I, I hope I taught you the principles of this darn thing so you can see that uh, what you have to do Obviously, you kind of look at everything carefully, make sure the gears don't have little cracks. Look at the forum. Dr. Dick, he's a genius. They'll talk about all the little places you look on the gears for cracks and stuff. Excel forum, I think, is the best place for that. Okay, real quick while I got it together, explain the shifting. This is an early model shift fork, or shift, shift lever, shift shaft. This is the late model. This one shifts on the right hand of the bike. This one, 1974, was a law. So they did a kludge thing, still using this. And by 1977, they redesigned the cases, did a big redesign, and it comes out the clutch side. So the trap door here, on older bikes, it goes like this. How can I show it? Ah, there. And it ratchets that thing, I think I showed you. Can we do it now? Well, not really. Can we do it like this? Well, kinda. Uh, so anyway, that's what, that's what ratchets this plate around and runs the forks. On 77 and later, it's a long, it comes in from this side. I'm sorry, it comes in from this side. They cut a big notch here in this uh, trap door so that this shaft can pass through and they, and they get it over here. So maybe of interest, don't get them confused. Usually these don't cause a lot of problems. You can get some corrosion and problems here, but uh, if the bike's been dropped, they get bent, you might want to throw a new one in there. Aftermarket, they're not too expensive. And I hope to see you next time. Subscribe so I can quit my day job and I will talk to you folks next video.